Okay, part two. So solving trig equations. State the value of each of the following trig ratios rounded to four decimal places. So you need your calculators out. They have to be in degree mode. So what is the sign of 40 degrees rounded to four? Go down, go down. Go down. Over to the right. Mm -hmm. Enter. What do we got? Zero point. Wait, what do we do? The sign of 40 degrees. 0.6428. Six. Six. Four. Four, 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 what is the cosine of 40 degrees? Just make sure your calculator is in degrees. Go sign 40, enter. Seven, How do you make, six, do you make it in degrees? Mode. Point seven six six zero. Yes. Okay, and what is the tangent of forty degrees? Well, you're point eight nine one. Point eight nine three one. Point eight three nine one. Okay. All right, so we good. So your calculators in degrees. So the first thing you do, right, because they were reset because you wrote a test. When they're reset, they'll automatically go into radian mode. So when you walk into the exam, from this point on, it's your responsibility to have your calculator in degrees. But we'll tell you, maybe, but if we don't remind you, it's still your responsibility. Okay, so, so it's got to be in degrees. Now, here's the thing, though. We will not put a multiple choice answer that is the mistake that you would get if your calculator were in radians, right? So if you're in the wrong mode and we said, what's sine 40? We're not going to put the value you would get if you were in radians, right? We won't do that. So if you don't get an answer, then you got to think, oh, wait, maybe my calculator is in the wrong mode. Next year, when you do radians uh, in trig, uh, radians are an alternate way of measuring angles, which actually make a lot more sense than degrees. What's a degree? What's one degree? What is it? One three eight sixtieth of the way around a circle, right? So if you have a circle and you make your way around one three hundred sixtieth of it, you will have covered an angle of one degree, right? Well, why three sixty? It's an arbitrary number, right? It just because it's also divisible by a lot of numbers, but it's arbitrary, right? I mean, why three sixty? Well, somebody chose three sixty, and we've just agreed to stick with it. So radians, when you learn what a radian is, they make more sense as to you know why why they are what they are. Complete the following table for the four quadrant angles that have a reference angle of 40 degrees. Round all trig ratios. Okay, so in quadrant one, a reference angle of 40 degrees will be here. Okay, and so, yeah, we'll just call that 40 degrees. The quadrant angle is 40 degrees, right? I mean, the actual angle that we get, the rotation angle. I call it a rotation angle more than a quadrant angle. Uh, the sign of that, well, we're just copying out the numbers, right? We, we did them right up above. Okay, so nothing changed there. No biggie, right? No biggie. In quadrant, I'll let you copy that out. So in quadrant two, we want a reference angle of 40 degrees in quadrant two, right? Now, I know this was a while ago, so. Oh, I don't remember this. Yeah, I know. It's so long ago. So that's my reference angle. What's my quadrant, what they're calling a quadrant angle, and I was calling a rotation angle? 140 degrees, right? Why? Because it's 180 minus 40. Yeah, so the quadrant angle is... 180 degrees minus 40 degrees, which is 140 degrees. Okay, so you go into your calculator, type in sine 140. It's the same. It's the same. Okay, type in cos 140. It's negative. And type in tan 140. The, the all science teachers combust rule. Yeah. I mean, I'm always going to refer to it as the cast rule, right? Because it's the only thing that makes up. But if I'm writing it out myself. Okay, in quadrant three, 
we want a reference angle of 40 degrees. That's down here. What is our rotation angle or our quadrant angle? Yeah, so it's going to be 180, right? Because we've got to go to here, plus another 40, right? Because I'm still rotating. Or 220 degrees. What is the sine of 220 degrees? Negative. Negative. What is the cosine of 220 degrees? Negative. And what is the tangent of? 220 degrees. And lastly, we want to take a reference angle of 40 degrees in quadrant 4. So what's my rotation angle, or as they say here, quadrant angle? Will be 360 degrees minus 40 degrees, right? It's full rotation, we got to back up 40 which is 320 degrees. What is the sine of 320 degrees? Negative. Negative. But the exact same values, right? What's the cosine? Positive. Positive. What's the tangent? Okay. So this just, it should serve to sort of reinforce the cast rule, reinforce the idea of uh, the x, the y, and the r but also give you this idea that you know, the, the sine of 140 degrees is the same as the sine of 40 degrees. Right? The sine of any angle is the same as the sine of the reference angle, but it may differ in whether it's positive or negative, depending on where it is. Right. So if you give me 220 degrees and I figure out, hey, the reference angle is 40 degrees, and I get the sine of 40 degrees, then I know the sign of 220. All right, let's go through this. What do you notice about the sign of the four quadrant angles and the sign of the reference angle? So here, let's do it this way. The absolute value of sine theta so its magnitude, its size, really, is the same as the sine of the reference angle, right? They're all 0.6428. When we take absolute value, we just make it positive, right? So we don't care if it's negative. Is this also true for cosine and tangent? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Thank you. In general, for any reference angle theta r, the four quadrant angles are 180 minus theta r. That's in here, right? So you go 180 minus that. 180 plus theta r, go 180 and then add. Or 360 minus theta r. And the absolute value of the sine of 180, so the quadrant 2 angle or the quadrant 3 angle or the quadrant 4 angle is the same as the sine of the reference angle, right? When you take the absolute value. And if we put that together with the cast rule, then we could say, well, if it's a sign and it's in quadrant two, I know it's going to be positive. But if it's a sign and it's a quadrant four angle, I know it will have the same value as the sign of the reference angle, but it'll be negative. Okay? So that's the relationship we're going to use. Okay? Reference angles and the cast rule. That's how we're going to solve trig equations. So solve each equation for theta, where theta is between 0 and 360. Round all answers to the nearest tenth. Now in this case, here's the deal, right? We are told that sine theta is negative 0 0.9659. So the related equation with the reference angle, right? We're going to say that the sine of theta r is positive 0 0.9659. Right? Because we know that the sine of the reference angle is always positive. So what is the reference angle? So what are we doing? It says nearest tenth. So I need the inverse sine of 0.9659. Which is the nearest tenth. Nearest tenth. Okay. You go second function sine and then type in. But we're only typing in the positive way, right? Because we want the sine of the reference angle. 
the sine of the trig ratio. Well, we know that the trig ratio is negative, right? This is a negative. If it's a sine function and it's negative, then which quadrants is it in? Okay, so quadrant. Quadrant three or quadrant? Do we have to do the Roman numerals? No, just do the cast rule. Look up the cast, and you say, where is sign negative? No, I mean, do we have to do the Roman numerals? Oh, yeah, I'll take three or four. But I'm going to use I'm going to use Roman numerals. So. So again, here's what we're doing, right? We're saying, okay, the sine of theta is negative. Let's find the sine of the reference angle. Let's use our calculator to find the reference angle, right? Because there's a problem. If you type in, go, go do sine inverse of negative 0.9659. Right? It gives you a negative angle. We don't want that, right? So then we've got to translate negative angles to positive angles and all of that, right? So we just want to be dealing with positive numbers. So we don't say, okay, do the inverse sine of this. And there's another problem, right, which is that there's angles in two quadrants, right? Because sine is positive in two quadrants, and it's negative in two quadrants. You know, cosine is positive in two quadrants, right? We know which quadrants those are. Tangent is positive in two and negative in two. And we know, using the cast rule, we know which quadrants they're in. So what we're going to do is just say, all right, forget whether this is positive or negative. Just do the sine of the reference angle. Find the reference angle. Figure out, OK, the sine is negative, so it's a sine, S-I-N. It's in quadrants 3 and 4. The quadrant angle then, with the reference angle of 75 degrees in quadrant 3, will be 180 plus 75, right? which is 225 degrees. So 180 degrees plus 75 degrees is 225 degrees. And in quadrant 4, It'll be 360 degrees minus 75 degrees. Is that 255? Sorry. Yeah. Can't add. What can I say? I know. Yeah, it looks like a 7.5. 180 degrees plus 75. Okay, and 360. Can I write 225 again? Go away. <laughs> and what's 360 minus 75? 285 degrees. So our solution is the set consisting of. And I guess really, we're supposed to round things to the nearest tenth. So let's put in a point. 0 degrees and point zero degrees, and then 285.0 degrees. And don't forget the degree symbol. Why does it have to be 0.0? Because they asked to the nearest tenth, so we're giving the values to the nearest tenth. Well, what was the, what's the actual reference angle? It's not exactly 75, is it? Uh, yeah. 74.9, OK. So depending on what we round to, that's what we need to give. Wait, the two angles. Yeah. So the quadrant angles, right? Like what, what, what the quadrant three, in this case, the quadrant three and the quadrant four angle. Okay, cos theta is 0 0.4581. So we're just going to say the cos of the reference angle is, now in this case, it's the same, right? Because it's positive, so 0 0.4581. We're going to do an inverse cos, so second cos on 0 0.4581, and round that to the nearest tenth, giving us? Okay, so it's 62.7 degrees. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, the reason is, see, if we did an inverse cos on 0 0.4581, which we actually just did, we're going to get one angle. But we know that there are two angles, right? And that's why we have to go through this whole thing. Okay, so we've got reference angles. The sine of the trig ratio is positive. It's a cosine, so it's in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. The quadrant one angle is what it is. It's just 62.7 degrees. The quadrant four angle is 360 degrees minus 62.7 degrees, which is? Wait, 
297.3 degrees. And our solution set, which is almost always going to consist of two angles, not always, always, but Okay, so again, what are we going to do? We're going to look at our angle. We're then going to do the reference angle, right? We, we get cos theta, we do the cos of the reference angle, or in the next case, tan. So we have tan theta. It's a negative. We're going to do the tan of the reference angle. We're going to make that positive. And we're going to do an inverse tan on our calculator. We're going to get the angle, the reference angle. We're going to figure out where tangent is negative, in which quadrants. We're then going to take that reference angle, put it into each of those quadrants, and get the actual quadrant angle, or what I like to call the rotation angle. Okay, so if tan theta is negative 7, then we're going to go tan theta, the tangent of the reference angle, is positive 0 0.7904. What's my reference angle to the nearest tenth? Thirty-eight point three degrees. The trig ratio that we got was negative. It's a tangent. Where is tangent negative? Two and four. Two and four. So quadrant two. So we know we are looking for an angle in quadrant two. A quadrant two angle will be one hundred and eighty degrees minus thirty-eight point three degrees. If you like, you can sketch it out, right? If you want to see, put a reference angle thirty-eight point three in there which gives us 141.7 degrees. And the quadrant four angle is 360 degrees minus 38.3 degrees, which is what, 321.7 degrees. And our solution set, which almost always consists of two angles, Let's just say more often than not, and really about 95% of the time. The only time there won't be two angles is if you're dealing with a quadrantal angle. Right? And then sometimes there's only one value for when, uh, say, cosine of theta is equal to positive 1. That only happens at one angle. All right, so take a moment, let's copy down. Any questions on this stuff? Okay, so you're given the sine, cos, or tan of an angle. You then write it as the reference angle. You make it positive. You use your calculator to calculate the angle. You figure out what sine the ratio was. You determine what quadrants it's in. You then take that reference angle, put it into those two quadrants, and that's your solutions. I just don't get why you round to the nearest tenth, just because it asks. But why? Oh, because they ask. That's it? Yeah. If it says the nearest degree, we just do the nearest degree. No other reason. Okay, so these are just questions for you to do, right? Because then there are answers at the bottom yeah, somewhere. So I think so. We're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay.